in the heart of ha 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 Hollywood, California. And the greats and the near greats on hand for this Everybody. one. 60 members of the press here to see the man on the bottom there, Oscar De La Hoya, his third fight after the Olympic gold medal. And he gets a guy who could conceivably give him a few problems. He is a guy, remember, who fought Frank Pena to a draw. As to De La Hoya, two fights, two rounds, no problems. It's hard to believe that at the age of 20, Oscar De La Hoya's boxing road has already been so long. It spans more than 200 amateur bouts and two pro matches, and it's produced international honors, fame, and a million-dollar pro contract. At the heart of it all is Oscar's hard work and his will to succeed. His dad, Joel, himself a former boxer, helped instill that drive in him and helped him chart the course. And this neighborhood in East L.A. is where Oscar has lived and where he has nurtured his dreams. And this gym is the dream factory, and like all factories, the people who toil there have to work hard. Oscar carries the banner for friends and family, perhaps. But for one person, his mother, he had a promise to fulfill, to bring back an Olympic gold medal from Barcelona. When she died in October of 1991, that promise became a quest. It's a promise that I have, that I'm going to get it. That's why, that's why I feel so confident, because because she told me she was confident that I was going to get the gold medal. That's what makes me more confident, and I'm going to do it. I really, I believe I am going to do it. While other American boxers fell short, Oscar did it. He won the only U.S. gold medal in the games. I can't believe that I won the gold medal, that my dream came true, and I'm just so happy right now. I just don't know what to say because it's like, it's a big shock to me. My dream came true. I accomplished my dreams. It's a big mission accomplished. And here's the guy who's going to be the other half of this pod de do. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> Excellent. Coming off a six-round win over Jorge Garcia. He hit a little bit of a lull at the end of 1991. He had that draw with Frank Pena, which has to be considered very good. Then he was knocked out in his next fight by Maui Diaz. Then he lost to Conrad Lugo, but he's come back with two straight wins. And here is what he faces tonight. Oscar De La Hoya, who has said that he feels much more comfortable as a professional. And the two fights he's had would seem to indicate that. And in his garb, he has uh, kept the Mexican-American heritage uh, look, but he has dropped the sombrero. Dropped the mustache also. Yeah, he, that comes on and off for him. And he comes into the ring. Resplendent. That's, that's a classy rope. De La Hoya and Alexander. And now let's talk about the keys to victory for these two. Brought to you by AutoZone. For De La Hoya, don't be careless. He can't afford to just wail away and be reckless. In a variety pack, I think he should throw different kinds of punches against Alexander. He can't be too one-dimensional. For Alexander, he's got to counter him early. And when I say hold, 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 if De La Hoya is getting on a roll with him, if I was him, I'd hold so much, I wouldn't care if they took a point away. Well, we'll see how Alexander decides to fight him. Let's get to the introductions now with Michael Buck. And Top Rank Incorporated, in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. The three judges scoring this bout are Gwen Adair, Lou Moret, and Robert Byrd. All the other officials at ringside shall remain the same. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the famous Hollywood Palladium here in Hollywood, California. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Six rounds of boxing. This is in the lightweight division. The referee for this contest is Chuck Hassett. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red letters, weighing in at 133 pounds. He's fighting out of San Francisco, California, and brings a good record, 15 victories, three KOs, against six defeats and two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, Paris, the Flying Lion, Alexander! And his opponent across the ring, wearing the multicolored trunks and weighing in at an even 134 pounds. From Los Angeles, California, East LA to be exact. He brings with him a gold medal from the 1992 Olympics. He's 2-0 as a professional, coached by knockout victory. Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar, the golden boy, De La Hoya. No question as to who the crowd is here to see. Have you ever seen a whole corner 
as bedecked in the perfectly the matching outfits like of those it, guys. Yeah. In, nice. in entertainment, okay, they call it a money look, right? And that's what the they draft. have. It's true. Room. Want to repeat? We're working on voice commands. Good luck. So De La Hoya and Alexander, and the fashion statement now made. Paris Alexander looking the part of the confident fighter. Very, very articulate, intelligent guy who understands what he needs to do. He is, happens to be a behavioral therapist for senior citizens uh, when he's not boxing. He loves boxing and says, he, I'm not going to just fall down for this guy. And if he comes after me quickly, he said, I will hit him with something. We'll see. We'll see. He's not a guy, as you can tell by his record, who's apt to knock you out. Only three knockouts in his 15 wins. He's not a huge puncher. What he does have is durability, and they'd like to see a little bit of that, I guess. And he's a pest. And yeah, I mean that in a complimentary yeah. way. He made it difficult for Pena to hit him. Oh, you heard one of my keys to victory, and that is hold. He did that. <laughs> First he closed his eyes, and then he held. <laughs> the other way around would be better. Delahoya all business, just as he was as an amateur. Yeah, the difference here, though, is he understands now that he can really go after guys. As an amateur, he felt he almost had to box. Also, he didn't want to He didn't want to burn out as an amateur. He saw what happened to guys like Clint Jackson in the old days and other boxers. They literally burnt out in their amateur career. He didn't want that to happen. And you know what? He throws every single punch as if it's a knockout punch. For him. He didn't used to do that. You know what he reminds me of in a certain way, and I guess I should say Jeremy Williams reminds me of him. Jeremy Williams, who became a pro and has done the exact same thing as De La Hoya. As an amateur, although certainly wasn't on the, the, the level of De La Hoya, he wasn't the slugger that uh, he has become as a pro. Double left hand, and down goes Alexander. Boy, that was pretty. It keeps happening. He keeps hitting guys, these journeymen who you would expect at least to get through two or three of those punches, and they don't do it. I don't think Alexander's really hurt by it, but he made it look all too easy. And I mentioned earlier, they really do have him headed on a very fast track. They want him fighting main events very quickly. Incidentally, I should point out, he's the youngest main event fighter that we have ever had here on Top Rank Boxing. Oh, this the first is it's it's 23 years. He is throwing some really hellacious shots here. Ferris Alexander might make some history, though. He might make get to the second round. So what he's been able to do with Delahoy, yeah. De La Hoya would kind of like that too, somewhere inside him. I think he'd like to get a little bit of work in. Oh, digging that left hand, that is a tough punch. Another bit of that left hand at the bell. Not much to correct Oscar De La Hoya on that round. Here's where uh, Paris Alexander went down. Uh, well, that jab actually kind of got him. And there's a left hand. Not too much, really. He almost was more of a slip, and yet Alexander treated himself like it was a knockdown. He had been, oh, that right hand. I think the right hand might have been the one that actually stung him. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Actually, I thought it started with a double left hand, but in fact, it was the right hand. Make sure you take your time and stick your foot in that foot. Okay? Wait that jab. Robert Alcazar, the uh, trainer of Oscar de La Hoya. 39 of the 53 punches that De La Hoya threw last time were power shots. This gives an indication that he is concentrating on throwing big shots to get his man out of it. Starts this round with three jabs, though. And of course, he has a tremendous jab. Watching him over in Barcelona at the Olympics, his jab was a staple. He used it to carve out several decision wins. What he does show is a lot of not only patience for a guy who was an amateur fighter, but 
He's right on balance. Doesn't throw bad punches. No, and you know, I almost hate myself for saying this, but you really have to look back to Sugar Ray Leonard to see a guy who this early in his career was fighting as a main eventer and showing you these kind of skills. Because few boxers, except a, a guy that wins a gold medal is highly marketable, will be in main events on television this quickly. They want to move him up to 10 rounds. They will quickly. In fact, they're talking about down goes Alexander again from that hand. Boy, he is so strong. And I'm sure Paris, who, as I said, just didn't think this was going to happen to him, is sitting here thinking, oh, man, this guy's stronger than I thought. Well, if you watch De La Hoya as an amateur, you would think that. Yeah, they're talking about having Bill Oil fight Jeff, Jeff Mayweather in March in the 10-round. You know, Jeff Mayweather has been fighting 10-round main events with pretty good fighters for a couple of years. When he's going, he may have to fight Roger Mayweather by, uh, by April. That's true. It's a couple of weight divisions up. Right hand drops Alexander again. You know, this crowd's going. Like these are the punches that would knock somebody down. Stop the fight. And De La Hoya has made it 3 0. And the crowd doesn't really agree with the stoppage, I don't think. But I think it only could have gotten uglier, to tell you the truth. I don't know if Paris Alexander would have done anything more I, at that point. I mean, they could have let it go, I guess, one more, more knockdown. But he had been knocked down two or three times, wasn't showing any offense. And I, I just have to wonder if he would have been able, effective at that point. I, 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 agree with that. I don't think that's in any way any kind of protection for De La Hoya or anything of that nature. Here's the last knock, though. Let's see. A good left hook. Well, yeah. now you know what? It didn't look like it landed very well. Sure didn't. Well, but guess what? If Paris Alexander didn't want the fight to be stopped, he shouldn't have gone down from it. But, you know, you can make the case, I guess, based upon the way that knockdown happened, that maybe they could have let it go down a little longer. Kick that right up. Right up. Yeah, that was, uh, he was knocked down actually by a forearm. Yeah. He had been hit with a pretty good left hook before that. So when you look at it in replay, you realize it wasn't a clear shot. All right, let's go to Michael Buffer and get the official time and such. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chuck Hassett calls a halt to this bout. The official time, one minute, 52 seconds of round number two. The winner by TKO, the pride of East L.A., the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. There is an unmarked face, folks, and with good reason. He's with Al Bernstein. Yeah, unmarked and uh, practically untouched in this fight, but that nothing. That's nothing new for Oscar De La Hoya. Now, Paris Alexander this morning, and he's a guy, by the way, as we mentioned, had gone six rounds with Frank Pena to a draw. Uh, Frank Pena, who you saw earlier this evening, a, a guy who was on your level as an amateur. You whacked him out early. Did, when did you know, do you know what the first big punch you hit him with that he was in trouble? You know, actually, the first big punch that I hit him with was a straight jab, which um, kind of dropped him. And um, I landed it right on the button, and I felt it on my glove, on my fist. And um, it was a pretty good punch, a pretty strong punch. And, um, you know, I thought he was going to be a lot tougher. Um, yeah. In, in some paper, he said that, um, you know, I'm 0-0. I'm really turning pro, that my other two opponents weren't nothing. So he's really going to give me a challenge. And um, I was really scared coming into this fight. And um, you know. Scared might be overstating it, Oscar. <laughs> I'm <laughs> concerned. I was, I was pretty scared, okay. concerned, and um, worried about he's going to give me a good match. And, um, you know, I mean, I I'm feel good. I, yeah. I well-trained. And um, I was training very hard. And, you know, as you can see, I stopped him in the second round and won again. Yeah, you did. And, you know, the, the thing is, and I wasn't meaning to make fun of the fact when you said you were scared. The, the thing is, he was a guy that should have been in at least longer than he was, you would presume. Yes, I, I, I would believe he would have uh, came out stronger and was going to last longer. Um, all the fights that he had professionally, the distance, he's gone 10 rounds, he's gone 6 rounds with Frank Pena. I thought he would last a little yeah. longer. But uh, like I said, I mean, we're well trained and ready for anybody. Seems like you're throwing every punch as if it's a knockout punch. Yes, I, I want to throw every punch with a knockout uh, I mean, kind of like uh, throw every punch that, I mean, if it lands, and knock them out. And um, that's what we want to do. That's what we work on in the gym. And um, we're going to keep on doing that. Be back in February fighting, and then in March, 10-rounder against Jeff Mayweather. 10-rounder. Eight 8-rounder. Eight okay. With Jeff Mayweather. And um, it's going to be a pretty good fight. He 
switches softball, he switches right-handed, and uh, it's going to be a tough match, but we're prepared for it. You're on the quick road, my friend, and a good one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, congratulations. Okay. Oscar De La Hoya is moving at light speed. What is that they say on Star Trek? Warp speed, that's it.